Morning ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to get this primary thrown back together. Make sure our uh, primary chain is adjusted properly, put the cover on, get some oil back in there and uh, tighten up our drive belt and go from there. So let's, uh, let's get this party started. Oh and if you want one of these shirts, let me know. You've got your parts cleaned up, you're going to assemble your clutch basket with your compensator. We're not going to use any Loctite at this point in time. We're just going to tighten these up loosely and uh, check our chain alignment. Your clutch hub nut is reverse thread. When you're measuring, you want to pull your chain towards you on both crockets. Then you want to lay a straight edge on the outside of your inner half and measure from there to your chain. This one is bang on. We're going to pull our nuts off and we're going to put some red Loctite on them and torque them to spec. Compensator nut, bolt, you want to use some red Loctite. This one's going to be torqued to 165 foot pounds. Use a flat bar like this, lock the sprockets in place. Pull this Use flat bar out, flip it over. And we're going to torque this one on the clutch to 80 foot pounds, but it's a reverse thread, so lefty tidy, righty tidy. Take that locking tool out and leave it in there. You're going to want to double check and make sure that your chain is still straight. And then we'll call her good on that. For your primary chain, you want about a quarter to three eighths of an inch plate when you adjust your adjuster. On this bike, normally your uh, clutch release rod would be one piece with the bearing and the plate on the end of it. But because we did a Baker 6 speed overdrive kit, it comes with the new release rod, adjuster plate, bolt and nut, clip that goes on the end, thrust washer and release rod for the right side, and a new piston cup to match up with your uh, throw out bearing. Now we're going to put on our brand new Cometa gasket. Primary cover. The primary cover has two different length Allen key bolts. Four longer ones around the back, four shorter ones around the front. You're going to torque all these bolts the center out to about 110 inch pounds. While we're here we're going to throw a three quarters of a liter of ATF in the primary but we're not going to put the cover on yet because we still have to uh, adjust our clutch and we can't do that until we get our hydraulic clutch line on there and uh, get the air bled out of that. Now we're going to go ahead and put our shifter linkage back together and put our floorboards back on there. Alright, we can see we've got our shifter all together, primary all together, oil's in there but we're not going to put the cover on yet. So I think we can put our fairing lowers on now but we're going to go to the other side and try and get this exhaust system on there. It's going to be pretty straightforward but we're going to have to modify the bracket. system we're going to be putting on. We are the Canadian dealer for Red Thunder exhaust. This is a two into one stainless steel exhaust system. It's a three piece design and will not crack and break like some of your other two into one exhaust systems that are one piece. Uh, it's handmade. It has a cone that you can take out with three little screws so it can meet emissions for noise with it in and you can make a little extra if you pull it out. Uh, they also have catalytic converter options if you're in Europe or in California. And uh, yeah, we're gonna put this on. Like I said, we're gonna have to mount, modify the exhaust bracket underneath the transmission because this is only made for six speed models and newer at the moment, so. All right, we've got one of these the rear exhaust section for a Red Thunder exhaust. It's a tapered flange where it goes in the head. We're gonna use a stock OEM 
tapered exhaust gaskets, which work really good. And we're gonna install them in there first. And they just push in by hand. All right, so now we got our custom bracket we've made. Paint is dry overnight. We're gonna get that mounted. Torque those four 5 16 bolt to uh, what was it, 16 foot pounds. Now we're gonna put our oil fill spout back on with our extension. The extension does have a little notch cut out. So the gaskets and the extension or the spacer only go on one way. Put your four bolts in there, get them torqued up to about 110 or 120 inch pounds. So now that we are doing the final install of our stepped header pipes, you wanna make sure you install your 18 millimeter wide band O2 sensors with a little nickel anti-seize on them. These are from Thundermax. Now we're just installing our head pipes loose. We're gonna go and install, now, you can, now that you've got your front head pipe on, we're gonna install this two inch P-clamp. Here you don't tighten up this P-clamp either so your pipe can still float a little bit while we get everything tightened up at one. Now, this is the Mothma from Red Thunder. We're gonna take our decibel killer out, DB killer out, so it flows as much as it can. This is what your DB killer looks like once it's removed. With this installed, it'll meet noise emissions all over Europe. So we're just gonna take that out. Your muffler clamp here, you go ahead and tighten that up. That can slide back and forth. So that ain't gonna, that's our P clamp here, it's holding it in place. We're gonna tighten up our front head bolts, head nuts, sorry. And we're gonna tighten up our rear ones, and then we're gonna tighten up this P clamp last. Now we've got this all tightened up. We've got two little stainless springs to put in on the back to hold this together. Now we've got our exhaust installed. We've got to plug in our Thundermax uh, EFI module and our O2 sensors, run the harness along the frame for the front one. Before you start this bike up, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you wipe all this stainless steel off. You're gonna have a bunch of imprints everywhere. Personally, I really like how stainless steel colors compared to chrome, mild steel. Uh, it looks really nice. So we're going to run this bike without heat shields. If the customer wants to put the heat shields on after, we'll do that later free of charge. Down here, we're going to run our hydraulic line down to our clutch slave cylinder so that when we tie up our wires for our O2 sensor, everything gets tied up together nice and neat. Remember when you plug in any sort of wiring, your Thundermax EFI module, or anything on your bike, Always use a little dielectric grease. Dielectric grease is not a conductor, but it will seal from water. All right, now that we've got our wire or our Thundermax CFI module mounted, we're gonna run our wires from our O2 sensors and plug them in to the main harness. And I don't care who you are, all the electrical problems that I usually see in here, 95% of them are because wires are rubbed through, cut through, melted through. So. Like I said, I don't care who you are, take the time, run your wires properly, make sure they won't cut or rub through somewhere with suspension moving or get hot. And uh, it'll save you a lot of trouble down the road. Also, when you're putting your zip ties on, once again, do not over tighten them. If you over tighten your zip ties, over time they will cut through the wires, especially your really smaller ones. Now we've got our wires for our O2 sensors run. We've got our pipe installed, our T-Max installed. So it's 12 o'clock here, go have some fucking lunch. Sorry about my language. Uh, what we're gonna be doing after lunch, you're gonna need some patience for it. So go have some to eat. Now we can go ahead and put our oil in the transmission. The Baker 6-speed transmission is still the same as the stock 5-speed transmission for oil volume. 3 quarters of a liter, we're going to use AMSO Severe Gear 75140 with zinc. Well, there you have it guys and girls, this is what we're doing after lunch. And it is now after lunch. We're doing these 14 inch bars from Polyapi. They're called the Monkey Bar. The monkey Bars. Everybody is familiar with. That's what the top corners look like. Really fancy. And the newer ones are a lot easier to pull the wires than the old monkey bars. Thanks for that. We're going to be using an LA Choppers 
cable extensions, throttle cables, clutch cables, and brake line kit. Sorry, not the clutch cable because this is hydraulic. First, we're going to take these old bars and pull all the wires out. Now we've got all our wires pulled out of the bars and we've cut them staggered. We're going to strip about a centimeter off of each wire. Now you're going to take your bundle of wire extensions and we're going to strip just one end for now. Now that you've got all your wires stripped, you start soldering them together. If you do this right, you're probably going to be here a few hours. Take your time. Make sure all your joints are soldered completely. And every time you solder a joint, make sure you run your fingers over it so that there's no sharp edges. If you've got a sharp corner or something, just take some needle nose pliers give it a little squeeze. Now that you got all your wires soldered on one set of controls, you want to slide your shrink tube over. Make sure you cover it at about a half an inch on each end, side of the solder joint, and then shrink your heat shrink. Do all your wires like that. Personally, I like to heat shrink all the wires inside the bars, not just the exposed wires. That way they're more protection. There you go. Now we've got one set of cables extended, heat shrinked. And like I said, I like to heat shrink everything inside the bars. Even when you're pulling, it's gonna make it way easier to pull your wires through. And uh, less chance of scuffing a wire inside the bars to short out. Now that we have our half of our wiring done, we're going to unwrap these 14 inch Yappy Monkey bars and we're going to get our wires pulled through and soldered the other end on. Before we pull our wires through, you want to take your pinky finger and carefully feel inside these holes where the wires come out and check for sharp edges. These ones have sharp edges, so we're going to take our die grinder and just take the sharp edges off. If you don't, over time those wires will get cut through. So now before we solder our ends on, we're going to slide our final protective sleeve on first. That way when you're done all your soldering and, and uh, shrink tubing, you can slide this down, and cover it all up, hold it all together and everything will be nice next time somebody pulls a fairing off to have a look inside. You'll see how nice of a job you did. You get your end solder back on. And take this cover here, slide it down, cover up all your wires and the connection where you soldered them, keep everything looking nice and clean. And you can take your heat gun and shrink that over top. There you go. You might be thinking, man, that's a long tail. And I did that specifically on this bike for a reason. We're putting a lot of stuff in this fairing. We're putting an amplifier in there. We're putting a uh, brain box for a jammer and a radar in here and a lot of extra wiring. So I'm gonna to wanna to move my wiring connectors over a little bit so we have more room inside the fairing on this bike. Well, there you have it. That took us quite a few hours to get these wires pulled through, soldered and shrink tube, but uh, the finished product looks nice and so now we're gonna install it on the bike. So we're gonna lean these bars back for a little bit right now until we get our fairing on, maybe later today or tomorrow. And then we'll set these bars as far forward as possible. I'm not going to tighten these set screws up until we set our bars as well. I'm not going to torque these riser clamps down yet. We'll do that all later on once we find out where we set our bars. All right, boys and girls. Thanks for watching the last few days. Now we got our bars, polyaffy monkey bars, bolted down with the polyaffy monkey poly out the uh, riser clamp, we got our fairing bolted on, we got our pipe on, so things are happening. Tomorrow we're going to start plugging things in, wiring up the rest of our stereo, 
wiring up our jammer for the rear. And we're gonna be putting a jammer on the front. There's gonna be a few miles of wires going into this bike. And we're gonna stuff it all into this plastic case from the factory so it all looks nice and clean like it should be there. And uh, anyways, have a good night. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Maybe another day or two, we'll have this bike finished up.